I want us to start really the deep end. Would you talk to us about some of the most significant barriers that women in Africa face in ensuring their voices are heard and their perspectives are taken into consideration when it comes to the agri food system? Thank you very much for that question, which is uh, very, very insightful. I'll start by saying that um, there's this saying that says, a child has raised by a village, which is quite true. But there's another saying that says, educate a woman and you educate a nation. Not a village, not a family, but a whole nation. So that's just how important women are in this conversation of uh, agriculture and agri-food system. So when we think about women's role in agriculture and in agri-food systems, we find that women participate in very specific parts of the value chain, but at, it's not at the higher end of value chain, it's at the lower end, at production. And in production, it's very specific things. It's planting, it's weeding, it's harvesting, um, aggregation is done by the men, uh, distribution is done by the men, and retailing, the women come in again, and then you find them along the way at value addition, where they'll be doing a quantity level value addition. They'll also be doing um, retailing of uh, cooked food and you know different things along the retail end. And then when you go out to the you know, high value sections of the value chain, you find fewer and fewer women. I don't think it is by design, but that's just how we find women participating in the value chain. Now, that in itself creates barriers because decision making is not um, done right at the, at, the, at the lower levels where the women are participating. Decision making is made at policy level. It's made at, um, at the boardrooms in businesses. It's made in, uh, in schools where um, you know, curriculums are designed, um, recruit, um, uh, what do you say, um, registration of girls is done. And so we need to think about how to break through to those places, move away from having these conversations about women doing the weeding, move away from conversations about women um, being cottage industries, but translating that into higher value, um, higher value activities. And we will see on this panel how, how that is possible and how that can be done. The second thing is that um, from their experiences, they can actually inform um, policies, they can inform where investments are made by development partners. And so for me, one of the things that I would say on uh, what we can do to increase the voice of women is to focus on industries, on sectors where women participate. You know in Africa, for example, there are some crops that are, or sectors that are not in the domain of women. Chicken is a women's activity. Passion fruit is a women's activity. But these are high value uh, commodities. Uh, commanding high demands, commanding um, reasonable amount of uh, value in, 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 the, in the economy. And perhaps we should invest in these areas so that we can allow um, uh, this, when we solve problems in these specific value chains that women are participating in, then we are resolving many other issues that women face. Because in Africa, we don't uh, deal in one commodity, we're not just chicken farmers. I'll have a kitchen garden, I'll have a cow, I'll have a chicken. So if you resolve one issue in an area where nobody else is obstructing me, it informs me in many other areas. So there's a lot I can say about it. There is. Yes. And like I said earlier, we cannot 